What's up everybody? My name is Max Feinstein and I'm an anesthesiology resident at the Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. I'm currently rotating on general medicine floors and I'm on night shift tonight, so I'm going to take you through a sneak peek of what it's like to be an intern on night shift at the hospital. Before I get going, just want to make sure I've got everything here. Got some food, some light reading, PPE since it's coronavirus season, coffee of course, charger, stethoscope, multicolor pen is probably the most important tool of any intern in the hospital, and last but not least, this lovely thing. Last thing before I head out, gotta say goodbye to this little floof ball. Bye, Kobe. All right, just getting to the hospital. It's a perfect night outside. Perfect to spend it all in the hospital. So just finished getting signed out on my 17 patients who I'm gonna be covering tonight, plus a possibility of getting an admission or two. We'll see what happens. Um, it was an exciting sign out. During the middle of it, we found out that one of our patients uh, had a saddle pulmonary embolus, so uh, had to call the ICU right away and see if they'd like to evaluate this patient and uh, go ahead and upgrade them. Um, the rest of the patients on the list, some of them are looking very sick. A uh, person who I'm worried about the most is somebody who has a head and neck cancer that uh, is threatening their airway, and they've been more or less stable throughout the day. I hope that they stay that way throughout the night. Um, and then other patients have a couple of GI bleeds and uh, quite a few patients who are recovering from respiratory failure after having had COVID. Um, so hopefully they just keep moving in the right direction and we'll see if it ends up being a quiet night. So speaking of COVID, I just noticed that there's a whole bunch of ventilators and other equipment that's here. And so I just wanted to point out that the uh, volume of patients that we have with COVID has gone down really significantly, fortunately, over time. So here's what's left over in terms of the equipment. So you can see we've got extra ventilators now, IV poles, and equipment to set up additional patient rooms. I think right now we have around 150 hospitalized patients with COVID, down from a peak of a little over 700 in this hospital. So there was a code blue that was just paged overhead and uh, went running to the patient room, wasn't mine. So when you go into a situation like that, you never know if somebody uh, may or may not have COVID. So I always have to take precautions, put on a uh, face shield and an N95 and gown and gloves and everything. So did about 30 minutes worth of compressions and unfortunately uh, did not end well for the patient. Um, always a really sad situation and hope that we don't have any more codes overnight. Just sort of a personal thing that I think about when I'm doing a code, doing chest compressions. Uh, it's really hard for me to not look in somebody's eyes, uh, but when I do, it's an image that always just sticks with me for days afterwards. So, you know, it's someone's loved one, a mom, a dad, brother, sister. So it's just always a sad situation when you end up uh, at the end of life in the hospital. Well, on a much lighter note, I'm heading over to the hospital pantry right now. A skill I developed early on in med school and have continued to hone during residency is trying to figure out the best place to find food and coffee. I'm very happy to say that my hospital, Mount Sinai, has a great pantry where there's usually food available, definitely coffee. So let's see what there is. All right, gotta swipe in because they want to keep out. Well, I don't know who they want to keep out. Okay, so got our coffee selection usually just go straight to the fridge. Not bad. Now, if the Oreo's already been ravaged, what have I left? Overall, pretty good haul for a midnight run. And definitely gonna want some strong coffee to finish out tonight. Well, this coffee is now gonna be particularly important because I just got my first admission for the night. Not technically an admission, it's a downgrade from the ICU, someone who came to the hospital with DKA. Their gap is closed now. I'll go lay eyes on them, make sure they're doing okay. Um, hopefully they're feeling a lot better. Sounds like they were in pretty bad shape. Their uh, blood glucose on admission was over 2,000, which I've never heard of before. So let's go see how they look. Well, happy to say the new patient looks like they're doing pretty well. Already off their insulin drip and looking pretty comfortable clinically. So at this point, not a whole lot going on. Definitely possible for me to get a new admission through the emergency department or maybe another downgrade from one of the ICUs. So we'll see what happens. But for right now, definitely can just chill and drink some coffee. Well, I'm happy to say that there's absolutely nothing going on right now. So I'm taking advantage of this time to practice my not tying so that I can go from being absolutely atrocious to passable when I'm tying in central lines 
once I finish my intern year and start my training in anesthesiology. I've got a feeling that this isn't going to last very long though, because one of my co-interns just got an admission, so pretty sure I'm next up for the admission. We'll see how long it takes for this pager to go off. Well, it's not the worst. Not the best not tying out there, but probably not the worst either. I'll take it. There it is. Didn't take long. Is that gonna be the admission? And yes, it is. Let's call the admitting board and see what I'm in for. Okay, so this new admission is a patient who's coming into the emergency department for shortness of breath. Sounds like they uh, had COVID recently and were discharged from the hospital and are back because they've got some respiratory complications. So let's see what's going on. Okay, so fortunately, this new patient isn't looking too terribly sick but uh, I don't really have much of his past medical history on file here because he's never been to this hospital before. So it's about 4.30 in the morning. I'm gonna have to call up his family members and get a sense of what medications he's on and all that good stuff for this admission. Ugh, so was just finishing up that admission and another code was called. Patient with COVID went to cardiac arrest. We did CPR. Unfortunately, it did not bring this person back. So it's just not been a great night here. I do have to say one of the things that has been uh, touching at least is that for both of the codes that happened tonight after the time of death was called, the senior who was running the code asked for a moment of silence and I think it's just a really nice way to um, honor somebody who's at the end of their life. So back to finishing up this admission and hopefully the rest of the morning will be quiet and as you can see the sun's coming up so the shift will be done pretty soon and uh, I'll be out the door around 7 o'clock or so. It's been a tough night, but at least we got this nice view coming up over New York City. So, at least we got that. Well, just gave sign out, grabbed some free breakfast the hospital is providing today. Gonna go home, take a nap, wake up and do it all over again. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.